This video will cover the topic, the graph, domain, and range of an exponential function. In our previous lecture, we went over different types of transformations for exponential functions. Using those transformations, we are going to graph our exponential function and then find the function's domain and range. Can you refresh us on the different types of transformations we might see in our example problems? Of course! Here are a list of possible transformations you might see in your example problems. This is not a complete list as other transformations are possible. These are just the possible transformations that you might need when working with these problem sets. Let's start with the example problem. g of x equals 3 to the power x plus 2. We are first going to graph the exponential function f of x equals 3 to the power x. We begin by finding at least 5 points in order to graph our function. While Alex will only ask you to plot 2 points, we recommend plotting at least 5 points to get a more accurate result. Let's make a table to show our points. We get the points 2, 9, 1, 3, 0, 1, negative 1, 1 over 3, and negative 2, 1 over 9. If you are having issues with the negative exponents, go back and review the topics involving evaluating an expression with a negative exponent. Now that we have our table, we plot our points on the graph. Notice that when the values of x become smaller and smaller, the values of y get closer to zero. While the y values get close to zero, they will not reach zero. This means that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Now let's graph our function. Once we graph our function, we can find the domain and range of this function. For domain, we can see that the graph continues in both directions of the x-axis. This means that our domain is negative infinity to infinity. As for our range, we can see that as the x values get larger, the y values also get larger. When the x values get smaller, the y values get closer to zero, but they do not reach zero. This means that our range is zero to infinity, not including zero. Okay, so we found the graph of this function, but what do we do now? We can now transform the graph to find our graph of our original function. Based on our rules of translations, our function has a vertical translation and it will move upward two units. This gets us our graph of the original function. Our points in the horizontal asymptote also move up two units. The y values for our points move up two units while our horizontal asymptote is now y equals 2. With this graph, we can find the domain and range of our original function. Our domain is still negative infinity to infinity since the graph still continues in both directions of the x-axis. For our range, as the x values get smaller, our y values now get closer and closer to 2, but they do not reach 2. This means that our range is 2 to infinity, not including 2. Could you do an example of a horizontal translation? Sure, let's do the problem g of x equals 4 to the power x minus 3. We first find the graph of f of x equals 4 to the power x. We first find our five points and then plot them on our graph. As the x values get smaller, the y values get closer to zero, but they do not reach zero. This means that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. After we graph our function, we can see that the graph of four to the power x has a domain of negative infinity to infinity since the graph continues in both directions of the x-axis and has a range of zero to infinity, not including zero since the y values get larger as the x values get large, but when the x values get smaller, the y values get close to zero, but they do not reach zero. We can now transform our graph. Based on our original function, this will be a horizontal transformation since our graph moves three units to the right. Our x values also change as they are moving three units to the right, while the horizontal asymptote stays the same. Based on our new graph, we can see that both the domain and range stay the same. This is because while we shift our graph three units to the right, the graph still continues in both directions of the x-axis. The transformation also did not have an effect on our horizontal asymptote, since our y values continue to get closer to zero, but do not reach zero. But the y values still get larger when the x values get larger. This means that our domain is negative infinity to infinity, and our range is zero to infinity, not including zero. Could we also do an example of a reflection transformation? Absolutely. Let's use the function h of x equals negative one half to the power x plus two. We first find the graph of f of x equals one half to the power x. 
plot our five points, see that the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero due to the y values getting closer to zero when the x values get larger, but the y values do not touch zero. Draw the graph and find our domain and range. As with previous graphs, our domain is negative infinity to infinity since our graph continues in both directions of the x-axis, while our range is zero to infinity, not including zero, since the y values get larger when the x values get smaller, but when the x values get larger, the y values will get close to zero, but they do not reach zero. We can now transform our graph. The first thing we need to do is reflect the graph over the x-axis. The biggest change when we reflected our graph over the x-axis is that all our y values have changed from positive to negative. This means that our range is now negative infinity to zero, not including zero, since the y values get smaller when the x values get smaller, but when the x values get larger, our y values get closer to zero, but they do not reach zero. Our domain stays the same at negative infinity to infinity. Our next step is to move our graph upward two units. Our domain does not change since the graph still continues in both directions of the x-axis, so it remains at negative infinity to infinity. Our range does change since we reflected it over the x-axis and moved it upward two units. Our range is now negative infinity to two, not including two since the y values get smaller when the x values get smaller, but when the x values get larger, the y values get closer to two, but they do not reach two. So in order to find our graph, we need to first find the graph of the exponential function before implementing the transformations. From there, we can transform the graph to find our new graph. We then look at the x and y values present on the graph. Based on these values, we write the domain and range for our exponential function.